My memory of the time, I grew up as a young doctor uh, at the start of the HIV epidemic when we had no treatments. And a lot of people, mostly very young, were dying and frankly, doctors could do nothing. Doctors had been educated really to think arrogantly that they had solutions to all the problems that there was a, a solution that doctors could provide. And of course, that was not true. Uh, it was part of the myth of, uh, of medicine. But here was a new entity, a new infection that people not only did not understand, didn't know the virus to begin with, but also were frightened of it. Away from the science, what do you remember about the humanity in those years when you were working? At the start, it was largely driven by a community that much of society didn't interact with and didn't frankly want to talk about. Particularly, for instance, in London, my own experience, it was in a, a population of, of gay people. It, it then became in the population of people that did abuse drugs. And in the early years, there were large sections of society that didn't want anything to do with it. And so the way that science took us forward so that we did have treatments, that we could save lives some five or ten years later, that people could then go on to lead an essentially normal life, but also that the humanity of the people who were suffering from this horrific illness uh, became part of the solution. And I pay tribute to the people with HIV in those early years who, despite the risks to their own lives, made the case for why this was so important. And I think those people living with HIV in the early days are so critical to the scientific advances and then subsequently to making sure the treatments were available globally. And I think they deserve all our thanks and credit because they changed medicine. We must also thank them for the advancements made against the current pandemic because it's borrowed so heavily on the scientific work from the 1980s onwards. Many times in the last uh, year during this pandemic, when there have been dark moments, when things were going very badly, uh, many, many times I've remembered those experiences from the 1980s and thinking we didn't think we'd make any progress in HIV. And then suddenly the world changed. But there still is, and we should not forget, there still is a huge amount to do on HIV globally. Uh, it is still a major killer in many countries and there is still inequitable access to, the, to all of the tools that we need in order to bring the HIV pandemic to a close. HIV originally came out of the animal sector. It, it was originally a zoonosis that crossed across from the animal sector into humans. It was a slow infection because of its chronic nature, but nevertheless, it was originally a zoonosis. And it reminds us that emerging infectious diseases can be horrible and acute, like the current pandemic. They can also be a different style of zoonosis, but they can still disrupt all societies around the world. And HIV was perhaps uh, the first uh, zoonotic pandemic of the 20th century. From the Well is a new series with global leaders brought to you by the China Current and Tsinghua Vanke School of Public Health.